I'll be talking to you about fish respiration. We fish use what is called aquatic respiration. It is the process whereby an aquatic animal obtains oxygen from water. In most fish, respiration takes place through the gills. Gills are perfect for fish because they have a large surface area to allow as much oxygen through the gills as possible. They have good blood supply to maintain the concentration gradient needed, a thin membrane to allow for short diffusion. Each gill arch has two rows of gill filaments, and each filament has many lamellae. In fish, the long bony cover for the gill is called the operculum. It can be used for pushing water. Without an operculum, other methods such as ventilation are required. Some species of sharks use this system. When they swim, water flows into the mouth and across the gills. Because these sharks rely on this technique, they must keep swimming in order to respire. Bony fish use counter current flow to maximize the intake of oxygen that can diffuse through the gill. Counter current flow occurs when deoxygenated blood moves through the gill in one direction while well, oxygenated water moves through the gill in the opposite direction. This mechanism maintains the concentration gradient, thus increasing the efficiency of the respiration process as well. Cartilaginous fish, such as sharks, do not have a countercurrent flow system, as they lack bones which are needed to have the opened-out gill that bony fish have. So, what controls this respiration in fish? Scientists have investigated what part of the body is responsible for maintaining the respiratory rhythm. They found that neurons located in the brainstem of fish are responsible for the genesis of the respiratory rhythm. Next, I'm going to tell all y'all about the body shapes of different kinds of fish. Some fish are torpedo shaped, built for speed such as a marlin. Other fish are compressed, flattened from side to side, useful for maneuvering around a busy reef. Did you know that? By studying a fish's body shape, we can estimate its environment in which it lives in. Isn't that cool? Kinda. This hagfish is long and skinny, which helps it do whatever it is a hagfish must do. Hey, I'm a hagfish. Each fish has a set of vertebrae and segmented muscles that repeat from head to tail. This group of bones and muscles will help the fish propel itself from side to side as it swims through the water. A fish has a number of fins. A fin is a membrane supported by rays or spines that function in swimming or orientation in the water. One or more dorsal fins may be located along the center of the back. A caudal fin lies at the end of the tail and is the primary organ for generating thrust to move through the water. One or more anal fins are situated on the ventral midline near the caudal fin. There are two pairs of lateral fins on the fish. The first lateral fin is the pectoral fin. It is usually found on the body behind the gills. The second lateral fin, the pelvic fins, are found on the belly, behind the head. These fins help us fish change direction, go backwards or forwards, or stay up or down. There is great diversity in the size shape and details of fishes. Some fish are string-like, like the eel, Hola. or globe-shaped, like the puffer, hey, what's up? or greatly flattened, like the flounder. What do you want from me? Some fish lack eyes, and others lack some features, which... Yeah, 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 we know this. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up, go away, bye. Their appearance is greatly influenced by their environment. Yeah, yeah, we know that. Hey, 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 man, I'm not trying to teach you how to fish, okay? Shut up, you don't shut up. The game. Oh, uh, yeah, real mature. The game. All right, yeah, you know what, whatever. Because I don't even care. Yo, mama. Oh.